A chopper pilot spotted this mysterious SOS signal. Now police think they have the answer. In May 2017, a chopper pilot was flying over a remote stretch of coastline in Western Australia when he spotted a sign made up of rocks. It was the International Distress Code, SOS, but was it the work of some pranksters or was it a genuine call for help? The site, after all, was extremely inaccessible. Swift Bay on Australia's northwest coast is 620 miles from the nearest city, Broome. The nearest human habitation, meanwhile, is the Kalumburu Aboriginal community, 75 miles east. Without a boat, a helicopter, or a sturdy four-wheel drive, getting in and out of Swift Bay is then a considerable challenge. What's more, the bay's fierce climate, which alternates between tropical wet and dry seasons, makes it an extremely dangerous place in which to be stranded. Temperatures in the region can reach a blistering high of 112 degrees in the summer. Further environmental hazards include heavy rain and cyclones. The pilot then informed the authorities of what he had seen and they immediately mounted a search operation. However, the site proved so tricky to access that Western Australia police had to commission a helicopter charter company. They subsequently surveyed the site and its surroundings from the air but found no indication of a living human presence. Meanwhile, a ground search of the site revealed few additional clues except that somebody might have once camped at the location. The age of the sign could not be determined either, which begged the question, where was its maker now? Had he or she decided to leave the area or would they return or had they perhaps died years ago? With few leads, the police put out a call for information. We're asking for anyone if they have any knowledge of the person who may have been in distress and may have made that sign if they can contact us senior sergeant Peter Reeves told ABC radio in May of 2017 of course the Australian outback is notorious for its inhospitable and in some cases completely uninhabitable environment this is one reason why most big cities in Australia are built on the coast venomous snakes and spiders carnivorous animals bushfires and the blazing Sun are just some of the hazards facing would-be explorers in rural Australia Indeed, countless outback horror stories recall unprepared adventurers who either vanished without a trace or barely survived some terrible ordeal. Robert Bogucki, for example, spent 43 days lost in Western Australia's Great Sandy Desert before he was found. By that point, he had not eaten food for six weeks and had not had any water for 12 days. Jeff Keyes, 63, had failed to find the waterfall after swimming up a creek near his campsite. However, instead of swimming back the way he came, he decided to cut across the bush. He then probably got lost. It was nearly dark. I had no shoes. What was I thinking of? He later wrote in his blog. Fortunately, Key's companions back at the camp informed the police of his disappearance and they immediately deployed a search team. After subsequently scouring the area with a helicopter, they were about to try a new location but then they spotted the SOS sign and found the missing man. In all likelihood, Key's SOS message had saved his life. Unfortunately, however, Western Australia police were finding the case of the SOS sign in Swift Bay harder to solve. That was until they were contacted by a man named John Byrne, who said that he might know the answer. He actually saw an article on the BBC, Senior Sergeant Dave Rudd told the same news outlet. John Byrne's brother, Robert and a female companion had actually been stranded in Swift Bay in 2013 and it soon transpired that the sign had been made by Robert after a yachting trip had gone wrong. He and his crewmate Joan had anchored about 550 yards offshore in order to explore the bay and locate a freshwater spring and they set out in an inflatable dinghy. After they subsequently landed safely on shore, the pair secured the dinghy to a rock it was then that they saw a massive 11 foot long crocodile heading right for them they therefore ran to safety and began hurling rocks to scare the fearsome creature away unfortunately however the crocodile was not at all discouraged he was not deterred Byrne said in a statement to ABC in June of 2017 he went to the dinghy and tore off the back of the inflatable pontoon it was all quite quick and we realized we were not getting back to our little ship anytime soon indeed Byrne and Joan were now stranded without food water or any means of communication with the outside world 
Luckily then, they managed to locate the fresh spring that had drawn them to the bay in the first place. For food, meanwhile, they were able to harvest oysters during low tide. Several days went by and Byrne built the SOS sign to draw the attention of any passing vessels, while Joan kept lookout during the shellfish forages. Both of them kept a close eye on the crocodiles too. After a couple days, we worked out there were at least two of them, Byrne said in a statement to ABC. Finally, on the eighth day, they were found and rescued. It was an emotional moment. Joan, for her part, had lost nearly 18 pounds during the ordeal. I guess we could have survived for a month or so on the water spring and eating oysters, said Burns, but we would have been in poor shape. Burns' advice for other travelers is to be extremely prudent when venturing ashore in that neighborhood. The most important thing, said Byrne, is to keep a satellite phone on hand. And having made the error of leaving his satellite phone on the yacht, he spoke from hard-earned experience. Fortunately, though, Burns' ordeal in Western Australia has not diminished his appetite for adventure. In June of 2017, he was still yachting, this time in Turkey. Indeed, he's continuing to tick items off his bucket list, and he has wisely replaced his chewed-up rubber dinghy with a crocodile-proof aluminum one. Please share this video with your friends below.